Fred Mack, CEO of Found Spotlight and executive producer. We have great artists on the show today. Check them out. Welcome to the show. My guest today is recording artist Terrenio. You know him from the group Subway with the hit song Hide and Seek. And the list goes on. So please welcome my guest, my guy, Terrenio. Hey, first of all, I appreciate everybody who tuned into the uh, the Facebook feeds and wherever y'all tuned in from. We appreciate it. Shout out to my man Fred Mack, the whole Fed Spotlight Radio, Spotlight TV team for putting this whole thing together, man. Um, like I said, this is a great time right now. I know we in a crazy trying time, but you know we back doing what we do. So I want to introduce, you know, an, an inspiring, great artist, dude out here doing his thing for real. Uh, Terrania, man, introduce yourself to the people, man. Yo, yo, what's going on out there? This is uh, Terrania. Hey, just um, I'm happy to have uh, Fred to have me on the as a guest and everything. So I appreciate y'all. Appreciate you, man. Spending time with us, man. This crazy uh, time right now. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. This is crazy. I never thought. You know, you watch the movies like Outbreak and stuff like that. You <laughs> never right. thought it'd come it'd come to light to a day of light. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's great. Right. So uh what's your whole thought about the whole coronavirus situation? Uh my thought about it is <laughs> it something that the government put out there. They had to put it out there for it, uh it inspired. because uh, coronavirus has been around for a minute. If you look at the back of your Lysol cans, way before this even came out, it was on the back of your Lysol cans. So it, it's been out. So I think they just had a contract on they had to put it out there before it ran out. That's why I look at it. But let me, I'm gonna stay out of it. I hear that, I hear that. So uh, let's let's go right into it, man. So growing up in your home, what was the music that was played in the house? You coming up, what was the music like? Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Jackson. My mom was a big fan of the Jackson 5. So that's actually how I got my name, Terrenio. So if anybody that doesn't know, Tito Jackson. When they also, I always say Tito. His real name is Terrenio Jackson. So that's how I got Terrenio. That's some good history right there, man. I appreciate that. Yeah. Now, um, me doing some research, found out that um, you were a part of a uh, church, part of the church choir at a, a young age. So can you let us know how that whole thing started about you, you know, singing in church. Oh, singing in church, uh, <laughs> you couldn't live in, in my mom's house without going to church. Uh, she didn't play that. She'll plead the blood of Jesus on you in a minute. <laughs> so, you yeah, me that. growing up in church, yeah, yeah, me growing up in church, uh, you know, she was a singer and uh, it rubbed off on me, you know, so I was singing in a children's choir and uh, they put me as lead, as a, as a lead singer at a young age, so I was leading the choir. <laughs> You gotta recognize the talent at an early age. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. that's amazing. That's crazy for a uh, young age getting to do things like that, man. That's a, a big step. Also, man, I understand that you were a part of a group uh, called Subway. So you want to let us know, uh, one, how did you get into the group and how did the group form? Oh, man. So Roy went to um sin i went to amerson and so i had my little group in my school and none of my guys was taking it serious uh so i knew roy and roy have his you know said they had a group going and uh so we would go downtown and sing in the subway so that's how, on michigan avenue so that's how that ended up starting and uh we end up you know forming our group and we went to a concert our manager had got us hooked up. Eric had got us hooked up. Went to a concert. It was Mary J. Blinds. I can't think of everybody else that was on there. Uh, I know TLC was TLC was there, but that's how we ended up linking up, seeing Michael Bivens, and he told us to sing right there on the spot. So that's how that kicked off. That's 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 what's up, and that's that's amazing. It's an amazing story, man. Definitely something that's a lot of people, you know, want that insight. 
uh, when part of your career you start singing, you realize that you would need some more help and you decided to hire a manager? Uh, well, you know, we was given a manager like off top, so, <laughs> uh, and we was young. So, you know, I, that's, I always grew up having a manager as you want to say manager, then on the road, having a private tutor and all that stuff. So management, I knew about having management. It was just the thing of having good management. You know, you have, when you were the label, you have people that's working for the label and not for you. So you have to make sure that you have people that's actually working for you and not the label. So, you know, if you have a lawyer, make sure you have your own personal music lawyer, not the, the label's lawyer that they try to get to you. Right, right. That's definitely, definitely what's up. Um, knowing that you have like a lot of background, you've been in a lot of areas, a lot of cities, and uh, I know, you know, things about you know, Chicago. So like name a lot of the artists that you like grew up either listening to, hanging around, or just, you know, being a part of. Oh, uh, so Michael, I love Michael. I used to try to imitate Mike when I was growing up. Uh, man. Uh, El DeBarge, that's my idol. <laughs> them, them notes he be hitting, man, killing it. So, you know, uh, who else? Uh, James Brown. I listen to a lot of oldies. Sly and the Family Stone. Uh, Jeffrey. It, see, my mom was a stepper, so I, I listened to her. She had me growing up to none but old oldies, you know. <laughs> so I, I like a lot of old stuff. Stuff that meant stuff back then, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. That's definitely um, coming out the shock. Now coming out the shock, crucial conflict, man. Okay. Rob, R. Kelly, uh, uh, do or die, <laughs> man. Those those are my people. Ben one. That's so Ben one is new, but that's 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 still my dude. That's my dude. Uh, so I, I listen to, I support all my shy people. You know, we all out here grinding. You know, working. You know, and coming out the shy, you everybody know it's hard to come out the shy. True, true, so, very, well, very true. Yeah. So, at what point did you decide that you really wanted to like take music like serious? Like you, like you know what? This is what I want. This is what I'm gonna go get. I'm gonna take the right steps. Uh, just I guess being around industry people and. Knowing that I can do it, you know, I'm somebody telling me, and I was in school, and it was a talent uh, contest, and she asked one person to sing, she asked me to sing, and the other guy was like, well, let me sing, he's like, no, nah, that's okay, she stopped him in the track, like, no, nah. you see right there, he got talent, and I was like, wow, okay, so I, and I really started taking it serious then, and that's when I was trying to push my my little, you know, group that I had together in high school, I was trying to push them, but nobody was working hard like me. Nobody, everybody went to want to go play basketball. You know, it was cool now, but I was serious about the music. So yeah, that's when I realized I was, I really wanted it. Right, right, right. And I know in this, in this music industry, that it's some things that you have to like sacrifice to get what you really want out of this career and out of this business. So name some of the things that you felt that you had to sacrifice to get to that success level? Uh, sacrifice, uh, kicking it. Really getting to hang out with friends and all that type of stuff, You, that that's pretty much gone, you know? Uh, uh, re, of course, relationships, you really couldn't really have that in a young age anyway. It was kind of hard, because people that want to talk right. to me, like I was in school, I was always gone. I was on the road, so I, that wasn't even, so, you know, part of it. They, plus, they ain't want you really having no girlfriends and all that type of stuff in the industry. You know, they want you to be single. So right, right, yeah. right, right, right. So you had that appeal to the fans and whatnot. Right. So right. yeah. So you know, th that's what kind of happens, and they put you in that mm -hmm. that bubble. But you know, that's sacrifice you you want to make to you know make sure you're successful and you're able to do what you want to in this in this industry. So mm -hmm. the marketing situation, like what? Where did the marketing begin there? Where did you start marketing? Like, far as getting your music out to people, um, can I contact the radio stations and other sort, other sort of things? Well, with all that, you know, all that stuff was taken care of for us back then. Everything was taken care of, but, you know. Um, 
Now, growing up, I wish I would have knew the business at a young age because that's what happened to a lot of artists, especially right. back in the 90s. This sure. this new generation is is totally different. A lot of artists know everything. They own the rights to their you know to their music and everything. But back then, you know, we was taken advantage of. A lot of artists, ninety artists, was taken advantage of because nobody knew the business side of it. Right. You know, all we see is what we see in the videos, the limelight, you know, the traveling and all that, and nobody understands the business side. If you don't have a business side down, you could be looking good in front of that camera, but you getting toe off behind the scenes. You know, your your money getting taken. You're not you're not seeing all everything that you work hard for. So, yeah, like if you even go back to like New Edition story, you know, we talk about yeah. that. How yeah. they they was like the biggest group out there, and they was touring. And they came home, they checked, they first check was a a dollar ninety seven cents. You yeah. you the biggest group out there, but you only bring home a dollar ninety cents for a whole group. What you gonna do with that? <laughs> <laughs> you know. So, yeah, I I would definitely say that's that was a downfall you know and you're a kid all you see is the next kid out there like oh man i can do it i can do that too i can do that too you ready to get out there mm -hmm. you know in this industry you know they ask you if you want to be rich or you want to be famous you right. know, if i, I, I want to be famous so yeah they make you famous and you you riding around you know like that they got a bentley and you driving around a 1965 pinto you're like where my money at? Nah, no. <laughs> right. You like, well, we actually wanted to be rich or famous. You say you wanted to be famous. You didn't say you want to be rich. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. You got <laughs> we made you famous. So yeah. As far as in that point, like the workload, like from writing to booking and performing in the beginning, how was that? How did you maneuver that? Or did you just put that in the hands of your manager and they took care of what they need to take care of as far as that, like writing your music? booking shows and performing? Well, you know, management took, once again, back then, management took care of everything. You know, we was under artist development, so everything was taken care of for you back then. Right. They, they they trained you, they, you know, work with you on how to speak in front of the public, you, you do your interviews. It was totally different than what it is now. Uh, I want to say that Man, cause that that gets me going off, man. <laughs> uh, that now moving forward, you know, uh, bookings. It's I want to say it's very important that you have, and everybody's on the same page. You know, your team is actually working. You guys are on the same page, so you guys not all over the over the place. You know, and making sure everybody knows what you want and what you expect. You know. Uh, so you guys are moving like this and not moving like this. You know what I'm saying? Right. But you just want to grow together. Now I want you to like go into more about like the the group that you were with, like, you know, albums. I mean albums y'all did as far as like from the beginning of it until, you know, the time that the, the group, you know, went they separate ways, situation like that. Well, we had one good times. That was our first album. And we was working on our we was working on our second album, but after uh, you know, and Jerry Levert, shouts out to Jerry Levert, the late you know great Jerry Levert, he wrote this little games we play, you know, uh, him and Missy Elliott. So, right. Um, I want to say that we we did good. We was pushing. We was working. We like I said, we was working on our second album. But due to the fact that we noticed that the money situation and certain things wasn't right, and we confronted certain people on it, and once we confronted them on it, uh, if so, if you notice, boys to men, we put an example, boys to men, high selling group, right? They was getting done the same way, and the only reason they career had a longevity career was because they got bought out their contract. So they was able, able to keep moving going forward. Uh, but being under a contract and you can't get out of it, you pretty much just stuck. Right, so right, right. if you're in disagreement with your, your, your team, they could throw you up on the shelf. <laughs> and that's pretty much what happened. After that, we got thrown on the shelf and 
couldn't move. So if you don't fulfill that contract, if they how many albums they got you locked in for, if you don't finish it, they got you locked in until you finish. Right. You know, you know, LL, he had to do 10 albums before he was able to get out his contract. Yeah, that's so. right. It's part of the business, I see. And yeah. as far as and as far as that situation, you coming out on the other side and having to I wanna say rebrand yourself, but reintroduce yourself to, you know, the people who knew you from the group. How did you accumulate your fans and how your fans responded to the way you came back out and how they responded to you now? Oh man, uh, my fans, I want to say they actually been waiting on me to do something. Everywhere I would go, they're like, when you gonna do something? When you gonna do something? And I guess when I first signed up with that social media, Instagram, whatever, and what was the other name you used to have back then? MySpace. MySpace. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, as soon as I got on and put, everybody just flocked to me. They, they was waiting on me. You know, when you gonna put something out? They used to hit me up. Just when you gonna put something out? So I'm still, I'm not still just been working, just working. So I'm the only one that's you know, doing what I got to do out here. You know, okay. I'm still out there working. Uh, so now we're working on my EP. Finally, great. You know, getting ready and you know this. This whole corona coronavirus thing shut us down because I had a lot of stuff going, so it shut the money down. But you know that you know they ain't stopping that. You know what I'm saying? They ain't stopping because we are gonna come back stronger. As soon as this is over, we already we waiting. So I'm able to move. We gone. And I also understand that you like really multi talented and not just you know boxed in as an artist. Um, Things that you did some commercials. You also appeared in a movie, uh, Road Bounce. Uh, could you elaborate on like how those things came about for the commercials and being part of that movie and the process that it took to get you into commercials and movies and other situations? Uh, let's see, uh, Road Bounce. That 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 came along. Is that I was in a lot of documentaries, skate documentaries, and uh, okay. shouts out to my my, my boy D Breeze, uh, JB Elite, my skate team. Okay. Uh, so when Road Bounce came about, the producers and they, you know, they have scouts that come out. They came specifically looking for me. And Nate, the owner of the rink, called me and said, hey, they're, they're trying to shoot a movie and they want you in it. Mm -hmm. I was like, what? So he said, come, I need you to come next week and they're going to be here. They want to sit down and talk to you. And that's pretty much how that kicked off. Uh, we ended up shooting at Linwood skating rink that was yeah. that was a skating rink that got shut down then we yeah. shot at uh sweet sweetwater uh i'm sorry what's that uh no fleetwood fleetwood's the one that got shut down linwood was sweetwater yeah and then so that was sweetwater and then you know when they did the front shot of it showing sweetwater that was actually navy pier that they okay. shot in front of yeah so that's how that came about for that one uh it was it was a lot of work. We was on the set for like 16, 17 hours a day shooting road bounce. Uh, for two months we had to teach Bow Wow, uh, and all the other cast. We had uh Marcus that played Moesha's brother and uh on the Moesha show we had uh Wesley Jonathan, my guy Wesley Jonathan, uh Ricky. Everybody pretty much got it that we had like two months to teach them. So they had at least had a body movement when you when we skating. So they had the same body right. movement. So whenever they show like the, the top side of them, it was them doing that was down. When they showed the bottom, it was us doing our thing. So okay. yeah. Yeah, okay. but that, that that it was really good. I like that. We had a good time. We had a real good time. That's what's they, that's, fed, that's they fed us real good. Thank you to Malcolm, the director. <laughs> hey, he made sure we was taking care. I had my own little, uh, my own van and everything, you know, fitting room and everything. So he made sure we was taken care of. That's uh, commercials, commercials. I done um, after that, but before even then, I was doing like little commercials. I did a Jewels commercial. I was tumbling for my uh, I'm Jesse White tumbling team. Uh, so I started out that very young. So I was doing commercials. Uh, we did a movie. Uh, Heaven is a playground. We did a little tumbling scene in there. Okay. Uh, then after that, after I did Road Bounce, I ended up doing another commercial that had 
Timberland beat in it. I ain't got no money. Uh, when we did the McDonald's commercial and I couldn't have to sign a contract so I can't eat nowhere else. I can do no other commercials, but I can do no more, no I more have. commercials. Since I, nobody, nobody food commercials, whether, you know, right. 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 Uh, since I did that, um, that was, that was real good. The checks was nice. Them checks kept rolling in every week. <laughs> you know, like, they're showing that commercial on TV. You getting paid. Every time they show it, you getting paid. Right. My agent, like, you got another check. I'm, I got to the point where I look. I'll get that check next time. I, I was saying so much money. I was just like, I'll get that. Plus, I had the money rolling in from roll balance at the same time. So, yeah, yeah, it was good. <laughs> right, that's 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 crazy. And it's just amazing. Somebody can just be multi talented and not just, you know, stuck in one box. That's a great asset to have, you know. And like coming back to the music, like when you came back out and you were uh, uh, just a single artist on your own doing what you were doing, um, as far as booking shows and stuff like that like what were some of the events that you were trying to go and specifically do or it was just a situation of i'm just getting back out here and whatever is fits my bill i'm gonna do well it, it really wasn't hard actually because i had uh craig davis we uncle, uncle, shouts out to uncle craig uh he was with capital records uh craig took over uh, he, he noticed my talent and he took over so i would go to pressure point studios Working, one no no playing games like uh, shouts out to uh, Lows man, my guys from Quiet Storm. Shouts out to all of them. Those are my boys. Uh, shout out to him. We we work hard. Like uh, it was easy. Like he put me. Uh, Bill, oh uh, shouts out to Bill Brown. Hey, I'm trying to remember everybody that was on that on the, uh So Bill Brown was you know over TGT, and so. Craig worked it out. He got me on the tour with them. So I was op- was opening up for TGT, Tyrese, Dream Wine the Tank. So I mean, I was out there working, still working. Uh, it just came down to the point where I had a new single that was called uh, Throw It Back that we was going to do. And they wanted like 50, Capital wanted like 50% for a singles deal. And uh, you already know, I'm not, that's, Nah, you can't. I'm, you're not gonna play me. <laughs> so I, I didn't take that deal. I could have just had a push, and people were like, "Why you just not take it? Just to take it, and then going to, yeah, I'm, you're not gonna treat me like a newbie." So nah, I, I didn't take it. Right, right, right. So tell me how that experience was, like you being on a in a group, and then now that you were now transitioning into a, you know, a solo artist, like going on tour with TGT. And you know, so many others that you interviewed. Uh, how was that experience like when you stepped out there and you was just a uh, solo artist? How was that experience for you? Uh, it, w- it was different because you're used to being on stage with your boys, or whatever, right. and uh, looking over. So, you know, you don't have that much pressure on you because everybody got their got their parts. So, now everything is on you, you know. So, you got to make sure that you're on top of your game, your breathing is right, you're not out of breath. All that you run around on stage, going back and forth. You got to make sure that you ain't got no help. <laughs> so nobody take over. You know, certain parts they know. You know, when you're in the group, everybody know each other. They know their weaknesses. They know their you know strengths. And uh, so everybody just feed off each other. But I have my my background singers. Uh, shouts out to Swift, uh, De La Fay. Like us three, we kill like they. We knew each other, so those my people. So that we. All vibe off each other. The music stopped. We didn't need no music. We knew, hey, let's just go for it. We just right, kill it. Right. We got the music. You got to be ready as an artist. Because a lot of times you have technical difficulties out true, there, and music gets shut off, and stuff started going wrong. So you got not a road without it. Right. That's crazy. So I I know as far as recording and stuff like that, like are you particular like who you want to work with? Is it people that you really want to work with that's in the industry now? How you just go about that process of picking, like who to work with, or if somebody contact you to work with them, how do you, you know, process that? Uh, I really don't get off into you have to be famous and what it's me to work with you. I could really care less about that. What I'm at, you know, that's that's cool. We can work, but I believe if you have talent, you just got talent. So you don't have to be famous and what it's me to work with you. 
You know, if you got that talent, you can do it, do the same thing as other person. That's just, that's rock. Just make it sound good. Uh, but if, if I had to work with somebody, uh, let's see. I think this talented. Chris, Chris is talented. I, I like Chris. I met Chris when he first came out. Chris is uh, very down to earth. Very down to earth. Uh, you know, everybody had a good, good days and bad days. That's right, right. You know, I don't care who you are. You're gonna have good and bad days. So sometimes you get people on their bad days. <laughs> sometimes you get them on their good days. You know, so yeah, you gotta believe. You know, everybody's human at the end of the day. I don't care if you're famous, not famous. That don't mean nothing. Everybody's human. So I just, you know, everybody has to respect that. You know, everybody's not gonna be cheesy every day. You know. You know, but from the cameras, you know, you gotta, you gotta learn how to turn those smiles on, even when you're upset. You could have yeah. just got into it with your, with your girl. From the cameras, come on, you gotta, hey, baby, bust that quarter smile out, half smile, hey, hey, hey. You know, from the cameras, you know. <laughs> right. <You gotta laughs> you go keep back moving. to being mad at. It. Right. Once the cameras off, then you go back, <laughs> whatever, you go back to, you know, whatever you're going back to. You know. But uh, yeah. I would say Chris, Jaquees, uh, Jaquees is talented. I, I, I like his style. It's smooth. Uh, who else? I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know about no duets yet. I haven't really thought about no duets. Nothing like that right now. No. But if that come along, then I I start thinking of somebody to work with. But I haven't thought about no duets right now. Right, right. And being a part that you know, technology is is evolving every like minute, minute and a half. How do you feel the marketing process of back in the nineties? to now would you say it's it's easier to just market your whole self as an artist in today's industry well i would definitely say it's easier to market yourself i mean because you got the internet so you can do everything on the internet you don't back in the day you didn't have no internet so it was like you had that one cassette tape that that single you had the instrumental (laughs) the vocal you know so it's it was just, I mean, but today you got everything. You put everything out there yourself. So, and I guess uh, that that's what's taken away from the labels, I guess you want to say, because you don't need them as much to do what you need to do. You can do a lot of stuff yourself. Um, the labels, uh, you know, you really consider the label is really just a bank, you know, in in cases. They're gonna, uh, they're gonna make sure that you're taken care of, make sure that everything is done. They're gonna promote you, especially if they got the money involved. They're gonna promote you. They're gonna do everything it takes to push you out there and make you big. Right. But at the end of the day, whatever they're spending on you and to push you and get you out there, they gotta recoup it back. So you gotta think about it. If, you, if you're not writing, producing, playing an instrument, doing something, turn the knob on there on the board or something, you, Right. You consider you consider a puppet, right? So if you could a puppet, then you're not getting no money. Sure. You know, you're gonna be the last person to get paid. You know, you got to think about the videos that you're making, mm-hmm. the videos of the '90s versus the videos of today. Well, it only may may took you uh, probably not even a hundred dollars to make a video back in the day. It was everything was so ordinary. It wasn't outrageous. But it still got its point across. Right. Now you gotta spend fifty thousand, you know, <laughs> all this money just to shoot a video, one video. Like many movies. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> About rims and cars and girls, and you know, so <laughs> today's world. <laughs> and with you know, it being the, back in the day, the girls had their clothes on. They didn't have to girls keep their clothes on back in the day and the video get its point across. You still get what you're trying to say. You back in the day, you could uplift a woman, and that was the man. That was the thing, just to uplift the women back then. Today's day, you know, we putting the women down. We call them out their names and everything, and they they tolerated though. So that's they tolerated. So they put more and more out. Right. There's no more yeah. respect. Yeah, and with it being so easy to you know market yourself and brand yourself and all that how often are you creating music how often are you pushing music out uh i'm creating music 
I want to say all the time now, especially during this 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 time that we got nothing else to do but footwork. I don't care. So whatever your craft is, you should be working on it hard as I don't know what right now because you ain't got nothing else to do but work on your craft. Uh, as far as putting out something, I'm, like I said, I'm working on my EP right now. I got a, a banging joint that if you go to my Instagram right now, it's called Bang. It's it's hot. And I just put like you know, a little snippet up there and I have on my views, just on the little stories, I missed over 17,000 views. So just on, just, on that, just on that little clip that people are like, when are you gonna do something with it? I got so many people that's coming to me, hey, I wanna, re- I wanna repost it, I wanna repost it. Can I? And I don't wanna send it out. Yeah, I, I don't want to, nobody get no ideas, you know? So that's all I'm leaving up there, just that little clip, that's it. So we finish and we get everything done and we ready to rock and roll. I'm, I'm trying to make an album EP where um, every song is nice. I'm trying to get back to the day when you could listen to a whole CD and they had to skip through it. You know what I'm saying? Every song was nice. Everybody, you know, not just the songs that you hear on the radio. You got to just want to hit out and dance, turn the CD off, go to the next, you know, go to the next artist. So that's what I'm doing. That's what's up. And I know there's a lot of things going on here. Like, what are your current like goals related to music like right now with everything and how you, you're moving currently? What are some current goals that you want to make sure you you tap into and you and you you know hit? Platinum. <laughs> platinum. That's that's my goal. I told my management I want to go platinum. I want a platinum hit. You know, I'll take gold. <laughs> but platinum is where I'm going. That, that's yeah. you and you. You got and you got to set your goal high. Don't don't set your your goal low. Then you ain't what you trying to go for. Then right. you know you set it low, you gonna go even lower. You know you got to set high. Set set the bar high. It make you work harder. You know just same thing with like the company that you keep. If you you keep your keep yourself around the, around people that's not trying to do nothing, what you think you gonna do? Nothing. Right. So if you put your surround yourself around people that's working. And they got goals, and they trying to achieve things. You gonna, you gonna be working hard too. You ain't trying to be left behind. Right. So, uh, yeah. So I always said, and I don't stop until I achieve my goals. I'm put it to you like that. So. Got to stay grounded. Yeah. In it. So yeah. from the '90s when you first came out doing everything you were doing to now, how do you feel like these fans have changed towards artists uh, from back then to today? Um. As far as R&B goes, yeah, I want to say it's, it's harder on R&B artists. Uh, everybody is, as far as new genre, they they more into like the hip hop. So for R&B artists, in order for you to really make it now, you have to do a, a club joint, something that, you know, the young generation can get into if you want a, a hit. I mean, I think once you put that, that one hit song out there, then you can put your other stuff out there, your true R and B, whatever you want to do. But just to catch them, you got to put something out. So you got to have a. It's like you almost got to have a rapper do a collab with a rapper. Somebody hop on there in order for it to, you know, sell and people to recognize you, you know, as a true artist. And after that, you just got to keep it up. Right, right, right. So, what is your process as far as like going into a studio? You like getting ready to go record? You finna? you know, do what you need to do in the studio. How is your process? Are you more of a laid back guy? You like to be, you know, you know, some people like to be in the studio solo. Some people like a lot of people in there. Like how is your your set process when you're getting ready to start recording and you you going to work? Uh pray. <laughs> pray first. Uh right. I don't I don't believe in having a entourage in the studio. Like I wasn't raised that way. Okay. Uh, Plus, you know, I don't rap, so I don't need all that. I don't, I don't drink. I don't really. I, don't, I definitely don't smoke. Uh, <laughs> and my drink will be a, a a margarita or something like that. So you know, <laughs> okay. that's once and that's once in a while. So, uh, water, tea, halls. Cause I put halls in my tea. Yeah, stuff like that. Uh, just me and the producer, whoever's working. Right. If I got a right, if I got a writer in there, then the writer in there, whoever was working, and no, if you're not working, and you there to sit around, what's the point of you being there? I don't, I don't need you to to be there to sit around. I agree with that. 
that. You're not doing no justice. You have no creative ideas to come up with to say, you know, so there's no point in you being there. That's, yeah, that's, that's how. And, you know, when we in the studio, you know, when I was growing up, it, it wasn't no cell phones and all that, you know, stuff. So distracting you, you know. So cell phone, you know, phones not even with Craig, like Craig, my, he didn't play that. Especially if you on somebody else's money, somebody else's time, you're not in there to play around. You're in there to work. Okay. So cell phones, you put either turn it off or put it on silent. <laughs> so yeah, I don't, I don't play that. That's what's hey, that's that's a be the best way to you know get your work in. You know, just going there with the people that you that's coming in at the ground with you. Ain't no point of having mm -hmm. people when necessary. And mm -hmm. uh, as far as and like, try to and, you know and try to get ideas, try to stop yeah. writing before you get to the studio because. You know, studio is not really for you just to be sitting there trying to write every song. You know, you on you on time, especially now. If you're on your own money, you gonna believe me, you're gonna work at home. You're gonna start writing at home. <laughs> you ain't gonna try to write sit there and write studio. You're wasting your time, your studio time. So right. yeah, I would say start writing before you get there and fix anything that you need to fix when you get there. You know what I'm saying? So if something don't sound right, you know, you could change some words or switch it up or whatever you need to do, do a layover, whatever. But as far as trying to write a whole song, then nah, don't do that. Right. What was one of the like biggest like shows you did, or one show that you just felt like was one of your best like performances show that you ever just did, and you knew everything went according to plan or closest according to plan? What was one of the most memorable moments you had performing? Well, it always it will always be always be the Coca Cola Fest Screen Tour, and that was. Oh my God, when I say it was a screen, screen festival, I mean, it was just going crazy. So I, I definitely have to go back in the day and say, back then, yes, it was it was crazy growing up. Uh, we had Brandy, who else was with us? Uh, Immature, it was, oh my God, it was a lot of us on there. Ray J was there. So we, we had a good time. We, we had a real good time, yeah, yeah. Yes. Coca Cola Fest Screen Fest tour, yeah. And with all y'all being there, all y'all, you know, vibing with each other and just working and collaborating, who are some of the people that you like love work with or the person or whoever you work with? And you was like, you know what? This is this is gonna be amazing. This project gonna be a one hitter. Like, what was some one couple of people that you enjoyed working with? Uh, I would say. Hmm. Tank is very talented. I, I like work. Uh, Tank Tank is talented. Talented as hell. Uh, from back then, I want to say, uh, who would I want to say? That was real good back in the day, though. Uh, Ray J was good. He was, Ray J liked to play a lot, but he was real talented. <laughs> Ray J liked to play, but he was real talented. And as far as like up generation, uh, like I said, Tank, Tank is talent. Tank, Tank was doing all the writing. He was doing most of the writing, even for like TGT. Tank was doing all the writing. And then everybody could come get their part. Ty would pick his part, the part that he wanted. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, I would say Tank. So and, I would love to, I would love to work with Tank now. And and yeah, that's that's an amazing dude. I know he does a lot of writing, a lot of stuff. People don't know he does, but he's really he, really talented. He wrote a lot, for of, a lot of artists. Yeah, he did. Yeah. He's I would say he's uh, underrated. He don't get, he don't get a lot of respect for all the things he's done. Because if you don't see Tank putting out something, believe me, he's writing something for somebody else. Right. He, He's wrote for a lot of artists. <laughs> yeah, and with what's going on now, how do you feel the genre genre of R and B music? How do you feel like it's how it is right now? Do you like the direction it's going in? And tell me about the direction you feel like the R and B music is going in. Uh, the direction is going in. <laughs> I would say. It needs to keep spinning. I mean, I think it's starting to slowly go back into what it used to be, slowly. Uh, because people miss true R and B. 
Yeah. You know, when you when you could really express your feelings to a woman and tell her how you really feel, things like that, you know. And you know, the labels miss that type of stuff. They miss that that real R and B. But they, you know, it's all about numbers. So they just looking at the numbers and you know. So they, they gonna go with numbers, of course, but they they want true R and B back. Right. Uh, they just putting this stuff out because it's just selling right now. So, but if it, I think it's starting, you know, people are starting. If you notice, they're starting to use sample old beats because oh, yeah. they running they running out of stuff, and the old stuff mm-hmm. sound good. Dan did. I don't know how many remakes they did off Tony 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 stuff now. I will keep right. the Tony Tony beats. <laughs> <laughs> True. It's a lot of so, it's a lot of yeah. They just like to reach back to the nineties, man. I feel like the nineties, that R and B genre, I feel like that's really been these last couple of years has really been starting to come back to the forefront. Even with artists remixing the songs or remixing certain instrumentals that, you know, when you hear them, you be like, Hey, that's that song from back in the day, or this, that song. Well, I know who the, the group who made that song and it makes them mm-hmm. appeal more to it. So my question to you yeah. is, how do you feel like with you coming out with the music you coming out, how do you put your stamp on this R and B music and, and that resurgence of the nineties music? Uh so what I told him I wanted I wanted something that was still like nineties feel, but still have like that new generation feel. So I just think just like mixing it together, you know, and uh putting your own putting your own vibe into it and putting something out that's people are able to vibe to as far as like in the club as well, like I said at the beginning. Um, I'm trying to put something out that people can still vibe to, but I can still sing at the same time. Right. And uh and it's still smooth where you can ride to it. So it's not too it's not too out there where it's a straight hip hop, but it's like right there at that borderline. So yeah, I'm still trying to say say the freaky stuff without having to be blunt about it. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> You know, so you're still trying to leave a mystery at the same time. So, yeah, yeah. That's, that's definitely like I said. I, I said, and I give Rob. You know, people be on Rob a lot, but I be I give Rob all his props because Rob was like the only person I know that was able to change during the times. Like he kept up with the mm-hmm. generations of time, you know, and able right. to change and keep doing his thing. He just he he, he stayed still. He just worked all day long. So yeah, yeah, I give it up to him still. And then us here at Fan Spotlight TV, man, uh, you know, people that's watching us on Facebook Live, man, um, we appreciate, you know, people coming hang out with us and hanging out uh, with you to get to know you even more. What are some of the, like, things that people may not know about you that, you know, people watching on Facebook Live, listen to Fan Spotlight TV, that, you know, you want your fans to know about you and your music? Uh, that I'm very down to earth. You can always... You know, talk to me like I'm. I don't believe in all of the the fame and all that. I've never been that way. You know, so um, don't got no big head. I don't. I don't believe in all the material things. You know, uh, I, I like material things, but I work hard for what I get. So I don't want. I've never been a person to uh, have stuff given to me. You know, because you can have it one minute and it's gone the next. So I don't really get off into cherishing. You know, material things like that. Uh, but you can always, I guess, holler at me on IG. Uh, I, I do respond. I respond. You see me out. I will respond. I'm talk. Whatever. Just I'm a people person. You know what I'm saying? So you never, if you're in the club, I was never that person just keep me locked in the VIP because I like to dance. So I, I, I'm not that person that's right. too good. You can't touch me now. Nah. Security. Nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> anything you would scare me come out on the dance floor with me and, t- and kick it with me. I'm, I'm trying to dance, have a good time. I like to dance. You know, I came from my mama taught she used to be a dancer. She come home from the club waking me up, come dance with your mama. So I, I love to dance. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah. And another case, trainer, I want to ask you is what is something that you wish you knew now? that you didn't know back i mean it's something that you knew back then that you wish you knew you know when you first started in the industry um just be watchful of your money 
that's that's all I can really say. Just I wish I known the business. That was that was it, you know. Wish I knew the business back then, but you know, watch who you keep <laughs> in your company, keeping your circle. You know, everybody is not in your circle for the right reasons, you know. Right. Uh, so just be watchful because you're going to gain a lot of friends, of course, you know, in this industry. Just make sure you keep the, the good people and get, weed out, you know, weed out the bad people. Right, right. No, because everybody got their own reasons for being in your circle. Some people just want to be, be there so they can feed off you, so they can, you know, just to be around, just to be there. Feed off your fame. Right. You got the ones trying to figure out how to get your money. So if you're, yeah, you just got to look at all that stuff. If you a person that's like attention and you got to, every time you go out to the club, you got to pop bottles and all that stuff all the time. And you got a whole entourage that you, everybody eating off of you. Right. So is everybody putting in or are you always contributing out? You're spending out, dishing out. And they drinking off your expense. Cause them bottles right. in the club, man, and they ain't cheap. So not. <laughs> You're definitely so, taxing out there. And that bottle gone. Hey, hey, get us another bottle. What? <laughs> hey, that's how they do. <laughs> that's how but they do. I definitely appreciate Trino for hanging out with us. You know, hanging out with Fan Spotlight TV. Uh, our boss Fred Mack want to holler at you before you get out of here, man. So I'm gonna Fred. let him come in and holler at you, boy. I appreciate y'all. Thanks, Preston. No problem. What up, Fred? What up? How you doing, man? I'm good, man. I'm good. Just it's working. Nice working. Having... All right. That's good. It's nice having you on Fam Spotlight. I appreciate you having today. me on there. Okay. You're going to have to come back again and uh, hang out with us. True. Most deaf. Most deaf. As soon as I drop this EP, as soon as this, um, this virus thing, we can move around. Because I don't want to drop nothing right now, you know, because everybody online, ain't nobody got no money right now to get the dish now. So, you know, if anything, I'm trying to help other people. My my thing is helping out the homeless a lot. So I'm, I'm really big on the on the homeless. I don't think nobody should be sleeping outside. So if anybody that knows me, they know I'm really big on homeless. I slept outside with the homeless just to bring awareness to the homeless. And also, uh, once this is over with, right now I'm just working, work, 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 work. Once it's over with, we dropping it. You know, we're gonna we're gonna have a a listening party. We're trying to set stuff up. I know we're going to Ohio, so we got to go out there. We don't just try to set up some listening parties. We're trying to do everything the right way. I'm not putting nothing on, uh, uh, what is it, iTunes. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not doing any of that, any of that until everything is promoted the right way. So I want to do it the right, do everything the right way. Right, right. Okay. But I will give y'all that sample. So if y'all go to my Instagram. If the sample is up there, I will probably keep reposting that so people can hear it when I'm working with it and you know, what I've got coming up. So, Okay, once again, thanks, thanks again for having me on the show today. Thanks again Thank for you. being on the show. Appreciate it. Thank Let you. Let everybody know Appreciate where you can find your social media, man, before we get out of here. Uh, I am Terranio Melody. I am Terranio Melody. So you can follow me there, and pretty much everything will pretty much go to all my other sites. Same, just that. Okay, cool. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you. Thank you. I appreciate y'all. All right. Yep. Y'all stay safe out there in the shy. You too, man. Y'all stay safe where you at, man. All right, man. <laughs>